What are you stopping for? I'm stopping for a rest. Really, Philip, you can't stop here. For pity's sake, either go on or go back. You can't expect me to spend the night like a hot brown rat on a mountainside. It's better to stop and drive the car gently over a cliff, isn't it? Well, it won't help things, losing your temper. I've never been in a better temper in my life. I love driving a hundred miles through the dark, practically without headlights. I love the trickle of ice-cold water pouring down my neck. This is one of the happiest moments of my life. Would you like me to drive for a bit? Yes, I was expecting that. If we get to Shrewsbury. Do you happen to have any idea where we are? I haven't the least idea in the world. That's very comforting. You all right, Pendrel? Fine. Where are we? We don't know. We've lost our way. We're somewhere in the Welsh mountains. It's half past nine, and I'm very sorry. Don't make predictions. It's ten to one. We don't see Shrewsbury tonight. Oh, well, no mind. Hello, Mr. Waverton. What shall I do? I wanted to go to Shrewsbury, but they took me on to crew. As a matter of fact, taking one thing with another, I'm not particularly sure that I want to go to Shrewsbury. As far as that goes, I don't particularly want to go anywhere. Something might happen here, but nothing ever happens in Shrewsbury. Something certainly might happen here. Well, I'll tell you something that might happen. I don't want to frighten Mrs. Waverton. Go on, Mr. Pendle. I'm not easily frightened. Aren't you? I am. Well, I'm just going to say You'll have to be a bit careful. Don't stop! How can I help stopping? Do you think we're in the motorboat? Just for the night. Just for the night. Mr. Stop. Pendrel, please! Sorry. I really don't know. Bon voyage. Well, now, for heaven's sake, stop. Let's look at a map or something. My own view is we're not on a map. Oh, you look, Philip. I can't see anything. It's all a stupid puddle. Seems to represent this country very well. Everything here is underwater. Oh, just drive on. We'll arrive somewhere, sometime. Yes, I suppose that's all we can do. Singing in the bath. I should have thought that was loud enough to wake the dead. That's an idea. What is? Wouldn't it be dramatic? Supposing the people inside were dead, all stretched out with the lights quietly burning about them. I'm sure it would be very amusing. I'm sure I could do with a drink. If people have to be soaked, they should be soaked inside, not out. Listen. What is it? Well, I heard something. Good evening. We've come to ask for shelter. We've lost our way. We're absolutely cut off. Don't you understand? We can't go forward and we can't go back. The road's blocked on both sides. Landslide. Oh, 
even Welsh ought not to sound like that. My name is Fem. Horace Fem. How do you do? I'm very sorry to break in on you like this. My name is Waverton. May I introduce my wife? How do you do? Fembro. Charmed, I'm sure. How do you do? Won't you sit down? Thank you. My sister was on the point of arranging these flowers. I don't know if your man explained the situation to you. He did his best, but I'm afraid I couldn't understand him. You see, Morgan is dumb. Oh, I see. Of course, I didn't realize. Well, we saw your lights and wondered if you'd be kind enough to give us shelter for the night. You see, it's quite impossible to go on. I see. How awkward. How very awkward. What is it? What do they want? Allow me to introduce my sister, Miss Rebecca Fell. How do you How do? You do? do? What are they doing here? What's all the fuss about? What? You must excuse my sister. She's a little deaf. In fact, sometimes quite deaf. They want to know if they can stay here for the night. Shelter. They've been caught in the storm. Of course they can't stay. We can't have them here. But we only don't have them here. down on turrets. Go on. You see, there's a landslide. Half the mountain seems to be crumbling. It only just missed us. The road's blocked behind us, and I'm pretty sure it's blocked in front as well. We hate to intrude, but what else can we do? You see, there isn't anywhere else we can go. Even the road below is underwater, and for that matter, this place itself may be underwater pretty soon, or even buried. What's the matter? Did you hear what he said? There's a landslide and floods. The lake has burst its banks. We're trapped. We're trapped. We've got to go. You hear? We've got to go. Oh. You're afraid, Horace. You're afraid, aren't you? You don't believe in God, and yet you're afraid to die. You've seen his anger in the sky, and you've heard him in the night. And you're afraid, afraid, afraid. Where's your mocking now? You may well be afraid. Your time will come. But it hasn't come yet. This house is safe. I know it better than you. Morgan! Do you remember the great storm years ago when we were cut off, and there was a landslide, and floods, and the roads were washed away? Remembers, he means his house is safe because it's built on rock. You will have to stay here. The misfortune is yours, not ours. No beds. I can't have beds. As my sister hints, there are, I'm afraid, no beds. That's quite all right. If we can just sit around the fire, that will be fine. By all means. I'm not very sure that I want to go to bed myself tonight. Morgan, attend to the fire. Is there any place I can put the car out of the rain? There are some stables round the corner to the right. Morgan will show you. Thanks very much. I'll come along and get the bag. Right. No bids. You can't have bids. I hope you're right, though. This house gives me the creeps, not to mention its inmate. Well, it's better than driving along roads that aren't there. At least there's a roof and a fire here. Now, Mr. Penderell, do you think that you could join me in a drink? Mr. Fem, I honestly believe I could join you in a drink.
It's only gin, you know. Only gin. I like gin. Mrs. Waverton? Thanks very much. Mr. Penderall, I will give you a toast that you will not appreciate being young. I give you illusion. Illusion? Huh. I'm precisely the right age for that toast, Mr. Fenn. Oh. I presume you are one of the gentlemen slightly, shall we say, battered by the war. Correct, Mr. Fame. War generation slightly soiled, a study in the bitter sweet, the man with the twisted smile. And this, Mr. Fame, is exceedingly good gin. Oh, dreadful night. It seems to be getting worse. Yes, it is pretty bad, but evidently there's no danger here. Your sister was quite definite about that. But supposing we are cut off, shut up in here. Well, it would be rather a nuisance for you having us billeted on you like this. But it's awful. How can you be so calm? You don't seem to understand. We may be cut off. Shut up in this house. I'm afraid I'm rather nervous. I am rather a nervous man. But the fact is, Morgan is an uncivilized brute. Sometimes he drinks heavily. A night like this would set him going, and once he's drunk, he's rather dangerous. I don't wish to alarm you, Mrs. Waverton, but I don't quite know what we should do. Well, I know what I'm going to do. That is, if Miss Fenn will let me. What? I'm dreadfully wet, and I would be so glad if I could go and change my clothes. What? I wondered if I might change my things. You look quick. You better go and change your things. Oh, thank you. A good idea. Is there a bedroom or something? room once. She died when she was 21. She was a wicked one. Handsome and wild as a hawk. All the young men used to follow her about with her red lips and her big eyes and her white neck. But that didn't save her. She fell off her horse hunting. Hurt her spine. On this bed she lay month after month. Many of the time I've sat here listening to her screaming. Oh, dread. She used to cry out to me to kill her. But I'd tell her to turn to the Lord, and she didn't. She was godless to the last. Well, I'd better change my wet thing. They were all godless here. They used to bring their women here. Brazen, lolling creatures in silks and satins. They filled the house with laughter and sin, laughter and sin. And if I ever went down among them, my own father and brothers, they would tell me to go away and pray. They wouldn't tell Rachel to go away and pray. <laughs> and I prayed and left them with their lustful red and white women. My father's still alive. He's upstairs. He's very old. Oh, is he? He's 102. That's very old, isn't it? He's a wicked, blasphemous old man. You're wicked too. Young and handsome, silly and wicked. You think of nothing but your long straight legs and your white body and how to please your man. You revel in the joys of fleshly love, don't you? That's fine stuff, but it'll rot. That's finer stuff still, but it'll rot too in time. Don't! How dare you!
Mrs. Waverton, you make it look like a party. Thank you. You must have thought I was a long time. Matter of fact, I thought you were quicker than usual. Oh, I just thought I'd been rather long. Shut up! Philip. I had forgotten my sister's strange tribal habits. The beef will seem less tough when she has invoked a blessing upon it. Horace Fem, if I can't hear, I can see. You're blaspheming. On the contrary, my dear Rebecca, I was merely telling your wandering guests that you were about to thank your gods for their bounty. That'll do. I know your mocking, lying tongue. To thank them for the health and prosperity and happiness granted to this family, for its years of peace and plenty. To thank them for having created Rebecca Femme and Roderick Femme and so... Stop! Bless our Lord, this is the house. May they approve a wholesome healing remedy for mankind. Amen. Have a potato. Thank you. Vinegar, Miss Femme? Huh. It's simply coming down in bucketfuls outside. Thank you, Mrs. Waverton. That's the phrase I've been searching for all evening. No, no pickled onions, thank you. <clears throat> oh, those lights, they gave me quite a start. I suppose it's a store. On the contrary, we make our own electric light here, and we are not very really good at it. Pray don't be alarmed if they go out altogether. Someone outside. They can't come in. But surely they must come in. It's probably dangerous out there now. <laughs> They're probably half down. You know, really, we ought to keep them waiting. No, I'm afraid we shall have to let them in. Morgan, open the door. Come on then, Morgan. Let them in.
I thought you were never going to open that door. Bye. <laughs> there must have been a reservoir bust or something. <laughs> Anyhow, before we knew where we were, something had fallen down and smashed the car in. <laughs> it's a wonder it didn't smash us. <laughs> Incidentally, this house will probably be washed away any minute. <laughs> Hey. Oh. Hey. Look at that! Hey. Oh, that's a grand fire! Hey. I'm sorry to barge in on you like this, but <laughs> needs must when the devil drives. <laughs> well, who's the owner here? My sister is the owner, Miss Fem. How do you do, Miss Fem? My name is Porterhouse. Sir William Porterhouse. And this lady is Miss Gladys Duquesne, a friend of mine. Glad to know you. Nice weather for dark. And allow me to introduce you. This is Mrs. Waverton. How do you do? And Mr. Penderall. How do you do, Sir William? And uh, Mr. Waverton. How do you do? Sir William Porterhouse. How do you know? <laughs> I've never seen such a night in all my born natural. I tell you, it's coming down in bucket fools. Pretty well soaked we were, I don't mind telling you. I shouldn't be surprised if we caught our debt. Yeah, you'd better not put those wet shoes on again. Or as Sir William points out, you'll probably catch your death. Here you are. These may not be exactly your size, but at least they're dry. <laughs> Thanks, they'll do fine. Whee! <laughs> Are you from the opera, Mr. Marjorie Bay? <laughs> Come and have something to eat. Oh, now we are talking. Morgan, bring up some chairs. <laughs> oh, roast beef. <laughs> There's nothing like roast beef when a man's hungry. <laughs> oh, roast beef of old England. How does that go? Do you remember that, Mr. Waverton, or was that before your time? Pendrel's our song expert. Oh, so you're musical, are you? Well, I've got a bit of an ear myself. Uh, have a potato. Morgan, bring a glass of water for Sir William. Take ourselves, for instance. Here we are, six people sitting around, and we've been talking now for nearly two hours. What do we know about each other? Not a thing. How reassuring. I agree with Sir William. At best, we only make guesses. If you were a woman, you wouldn't talk about only guesses. Ah, the famous old feminine intuition. Does it ever tell you which horse is going to win the derby? No, but it tells me quite a lot about you. I wonder, Mrs. Waverton, whether it happens to tell you that I am wanted by the police. I know, Mr. Fem, it tells me nothing so romantic. After all, can you conceive of anybody living in a house like this if they didn't have to? Well, there's no accounting for tastes, you know. <laughs> no. Mr. Kane. Yes? What does your intuition tell you about me? Quite a lot. Hmm, that frightens me a good deal. What does it tell you? It tells me... Well, it's not very interesting anyway. Why, well, yes, it is. Let's have it. Well, <laughs> it sounds silly, but... I think he doesn't quite fit into these times. You know, factories and cheap advertising, money-grubbing and... Well... What I mean is, Bill here is all right with these things, but they make Mr. Pendrell a kind of fish out of water. You should be flattered, Mr. Pendrell. No, I'm not flattered. You see, I've not much sympathy with fish out of water, although I happen to be one myself. My trouble is, I don't think enough things are worthwhile. Now, Sir William here would put tremendous energy into anything to make even a few pounds. Now, I don't think it's worth it. No doubt you'll think I'm very pathetic, my young friend, but maybe I can see through things a bit further than you suppose. That was a very fine speech of yours, but I know, as well as everybody else here, that you're really only getting at me. Well, honestly, I wasn't doing anything of the kind. 
I envy you. I admire you. Oh, yes, you envy me, all right, but you don't admire me. <laughs> but I... I don't admire myself so much. I know that money-making isn't everything. But let me tell you something. I'm a young man, see? Married to a Manchester girl, pretty as paint. The only thing in the world I care about. Well, she dies. It's this way. My directors give a party. They ask us. Red letter day for us, I can tell you. <laughs> I buy me first dress suit and Lucy has a new frock. A cotton frock. It seems that Lucy didn't go too well at that party, especially with the women. They snubbed her. Nothing definite, you know. Just didn't think the cotton frock was good enough. Well, Lucy worries about it. Gets it into her head that she's going to hold me back. Well, you may not believe it, but I know that's what killed her. That's what started me making money. I swore I'd smash those fellows and their wives who wouldn't give my Lucy a kind word. <laughs> and I have smashed them, at least most of them. Once you've started making money, it's hard to stop. Especially if you're like me. There isn't much else you're good at. <laughs> but what Gladys here has to be superior about, I don't know, Miss Duquesne. Why don't you tell him your real name? My real name is Perkins. And a very nice name, too. I may not be this and I may not be that. But you don't catch me pretending to be what I'm not. I think I'm finding you a little bit offensive. That's all right, Mr. Pendrell. I can take care of myself. At least if I can't by now, I never will be able to. I wasn't trying to put anything across you, Bill. I don't pretend to be what I'm not either. I'm not as dumb as that. These people here know a chorus girl when they see one. And incidentally, not a very good chorus girl at that. If I were better at my job, I probably wouldn't be weekending with you. No, I take that back. I probably would. You're nice enough. We get on, but... Mark to the bottle again. I knew he'd be here again tonight. Where'd he get it from? He didn't get it from me. Can't you stop him? He's in the kitchen now, drunk. Quite drunk. Who's Morgan? Is he the fellow that waited on us at table? Yes. Morgan is the... the butler. Looks to me as if he could do with a shave. <laughs> oh, hello. Hello. Well? Have you come over to help me gaze upon the wrath of God? No. I came to say thank you for trying to take my part just now. Charmed, I'm sure, Mr. King. Perkins to you. Nice Perkins. I say, I'd mortgage the old homestead for a drink. Mm, so would I. And we'll have one. I've got some whiskey in the car. I've forgotten all about it. You stay here and I'll go and get it. No, I'll come with you. Cover. The car's in the stables and you get soaked. All right, don't be long. I know wind when I see it. It doesn't sound much, but, well, you know, it gave me a bit of a turn. Yes, I bet it did. Here, what you want is a drink of this. Thanks. 
<laughs> I feel a bit more human now. This certainly is a benighted household. You're right, it is. Look at those. Come on, take them off. <laughs> I seem to spend most of the evening changing your shoes. You ought to be a nursery maid. Yes, except that the best nursery maids don't drink whiskey out of the bottle. Oh. Because he'll stay out this time. Now we should be miserable all the evening. That's all right. Sure, there's some candles somewhere, Arthur. Can I do anything about the lights, Miss Fenn? No. Nobody understands our lights except Morgan. And as an electrician, Morgan is temporarily disqualified. You haven't got a lamp by any chance, have you? No. No. We haven't got a lamp. What did they say? Nothing. Nothing important. Oh. Nothing important. <laughs> This happened, I heard that time. They want a lamp. Give them a large one. There's oil in it. We used it the last time the lights went wrong. Go on, Horace. You know the one? I don't remember where it is. Suppose you get it, Rebecca. It's too big for me. If you don't know where it is, I'll tell you. Well, you know as well as I do. It's on the top landing on the little table. Do you know where the top landing is, Horace? At least you might believe there is a top landing, although you do believe in so little. It's up there, Horace. Up there. Next to roof. Yes, of course, I remember. But I think it's a little too heavy for me. I don't think I could carry it down all those stairs. Why don't you say what you mean, Horace? <laughs> you mean you're not afraid to go up there alone? You go with him. Here, take this. I don't know why I bother myself. Do you all go to sit in the dark? Yes, I, I suppose we have. We won't be long. That's all right. Mrs. Weber will say that I don't get nervy. You better lead the way. This is my room. Oh? There are one or two things that I should very much like for you to see. I should like to very much, but you must show me some other time. We've got to get that lamp. Yes. Listen. Why should we bother about the lamp? Let us wait here for a few minutes, and then go back and see if we couldn't find it. Or that it's broken. I can't see the point. Yes, but why should we trouble about the lamp if we don't want to? But I said we'd get it, so why shouldn't we get it? Yes, but why should we if we don't want to, and I don't want to? But this is absurd. I... Did you hear that? I did hear something. What was it? It must have been Morgan. He's drunk, you know. He's probably making a disturbance downstairs in the kitchen. I thought that noise came from upstairs. Anyway, what about this lamp? I wondered whether you'd excuse me from coming with you. I'm not very strong. There are rather a lot of stairs. I really should have told you before, but the, the vanity of age, you know. You'll find it on the little table at the end of the landing. Two floors above. I suppose it's not too heavy for me to carry. Oh, no, not at all. It's quite light, really. I see. Thank you. Thank you very much.
Captain shut what? The rain's pouring and the flood's rising. The room will be drenched if you don't come quickly. She means the window in her room. I'm afraid I opened it. Go on. You open it, you can shut it. That's all right, Miss Firm. I'll come and shut it. Oh. Same breathing from here. He's only stunned. He'll be conscious in a minute, though he'll probably fall asleep again. He's very drunk. Oh, Philip, this is an awful house. It isn't very nice, is it? Listen, Margaret. Something happened upstairs just now. Oh, Philip, not something else horrible. No, this was nothing horrible. It was a voice calling from behind the door. Tiny voice, rather like a child. I think I ought to go and see what it is. You'll have to come with me. I'm not going to leave you alone again. He'll be all right. Take my hand, darling. Oh, Philip! What is it? Sit down here a minute, darling. Thanks. Well, what happened then? Well, then the war ended. What about the girl? Oh, the girl I left behind me. The girl you were in love with. Why, she got married, Gladys. What a beast. No, on the contrary, a lady of rather good judgment. But now let's talk about you for a bit. I know what you're going to say. You're going to ask me about Bill Porterhouse. Clever, Miss Perkins. I don't mind telling you. I'd rather like to. Bill's all right, really. Of course, I don't love him. Of course, he gives me money. Oh, not very much. Just enough to keep me going. You probably won't believe me, but Bill doesn't... He doesn't expect anything. Do you know what I mean by anything? Yes, I know what you mean by anything. He likes people to think he's ever so gay. You see, for all his money, he's a bit lonely. 
Yes, I spotted that when he told us the story of the cotton dress. I think he's in love with that little dead wife still. I'm sure he is. I suppose that's why he only wants me, well, for company. He likes to sit on my bed at night and boast to me about the things he's done during the day. Well, that's harmless enough. Mind you, I'm not pretending to be any better than I am. You're a nice creature, aren't you? I like you. Awfully. And I you. What are you thinking of? You may not be very pleased. Risk it. I was thinking I'd like to pretend that I was your lover. And that you were mine, Gladys, body and soul. I'd like to take you in my arms. And hold you. And press you to me very gently. Very tight. I'd like it too. Would you, Gladys Perkins? Why then, let's pretend. Listen. Gladys Perkins has an idea. I think she must have gone mad. She... She... She wants to live with you. I'm just flinging myself at your head. I've got a crazy idea that I might help you to be a useful person. Darling Perkins. Do you think I'm mad? Quite mad, my darling. And thank God for it. Well, what you say? That's what I say, Perkins, darling. But I've got a better idea than yours. An improvement on it. What is it? Well, it's just this. No, I won't tell you here. There's magic here. I'll tell you later on in the house, perhaps even in the cold light of morning. Tell me now. Come on, let's go back there. No. No, let's stay here. You're cold. No. It's just the idea of going back to that house that made me shiver. I've got a funny feeling something dreadful might happen to us if we go back to that house. Perkins, Perkins, you've my strong right arm, haven't you? All right. Come on. No, you can't put on those wet shoes. I'm going to try to carry you. I'm a devil of a weight. Well, if you're too heavy for me, I shall drop you in the mud and go on alone. <laughs> out to the car to get a drink. And I went with him. Ooh. She got her feet wet. Oh, she got her feet wet. Yes, she got her feet wet. Well, what the devil's been happening here? I don't know what the devil's been happening here or anywhere else. I don't know what's been happening anywhere. I went into the old girl's room to close a window and came back and found this. Well, where are all the others? I don't know, no more than you. Mr. Waverton went upstairs with thingamy tight to fetch a lamp. I suppose his wife joined him. I've been asleep. So you got your feet wet. Yes, Bill. And that wasn't all, I... Yes, I didn't suppose it was. I don't quite know how you'll take this, but... Well, I've got to get it off my chest. Come on, let's have it. I've fallen in love, Bill. Oh, you are, have you? With him? Yes, with him. Darned fool. Probably, but we don't choose these things. Has he got any money? Not a penny. But you're going off with him? Yes, Bill. Are you angry? I think you're a lunatic. But I'm not angry. He took it pretty well, didn't he, Perkins? I told you. 
Bill's all right. He is indeed. What do the others can be? Listen, Bill. She hasn't told you everything. And she? Why not? Because she doesn't know everything herself. We're going to be married. Oh, are you? At least if she'll have me. I'm going to ask her tomorrow, in the cold light of morning. Will you come to the wedding? I think you're off your head. Do you? No, I don't. I think it's probably the best day's work you've ever done in your life. Ah, Bill. Bill. Who told you you could call me Bill? <laughs> well, you try and stop me. Now, look here. Come and make yourself useful and put this table on its feet. <laughs> That's no way to treat roast beef. Miss Perkins, tend the roast beef. Tend it yourself. <laughs> Sure you feel better? Yes, I'm all right. Well, let's go on. This is the door. Are you Sir Roderick's then? We, we came in because we thought we heard you calling. Can we get you anything? Can you take it yourself or shall I give it to you? I can take it myself. Thank you. What's that noise? Was it uh, Morgan? Yes. Morgan is a savage. I, uh, I must apologize. But we have to keep him here. You shouldn't have come here. I'm very sorry, but really we couldn't help it. Oh, I, I don't mean that. I was never inhospitable. Never. This house was always filled with guests once upon a time. <laughs> when you came, what did they tell you? Why, they told us you were an invalid. Was that all? Yes. You've seen my son, Horace, and his sister, Rebecca. Yes. And Morgan. I would like to tell you all about it, but... There may not be time. You see, when you're as old as I am, at any minute you may just die. <laughs> oh, please don't talk if it tires you. This is an unlucky house. Two of my children died when they were 20. And then other things happened. Madness came. <laughs> We are all touched with it a little, you see. Except me. At least I... I don't think I am. <laughs> Would you like to go to sleep now? No. Not just yet. You see, it may be... It may be what? Dangerous. You mean Morgan? No, not Morgan. I mean from my eldest son, Saul. Saul? They didn't tell you about Saul. No, they didn't. Saul is the worst, you know. 
we have to watch him. Because, you see, he wants... He just wants to destroy, to kill. <laughs> Poor soul. Where is he? I know where he is. He's upstairs behind that bolted door, isn't he? Yes. Locked in. <laughs> so is why we have to keep Morgan. But if he did get out? Saul quite certainly would set fire to the house. <laughs> he tried to once before. He wanted, he said, to, to make this house a burnt offering. But isn't he safely locked in? Yes. But you see, if Morgan is bad, I, uh, I think he might uh, open the door. <laughs> Philip, what have you come to? Wait here. I'll go down and look at him. I heard him. He's gone to let Saul out. Wait for him downstairs and kill him. What are we to do? Can't we stay in here? No, suppose he set fire to the place. Come on. But what about Sir Roderick? We must lock the door. Sir Roderick, I'm going to lock you in. He's asleep. There's a madman upstairs. Morgan's let him out and he's dangerous. We've got to do something. Good gosh, where are they? Upstairs, but they may come down any minute. That's all right, my dear. I knew I felt something dreadful was going to happen. Hadn't we better get out of the way? No, we can't do that. We might set fire to the place. He's tried it once before. Well, let him. Let the rotten old place burn. I wish it would. Well, that's all right. But what about the fence? What is it? Your brother's out of his room. What? So? <laughs> Look!
there's going to be trouble. Come on, come in here. No, I don't want to be shut up. I'd rather stay. Gladys, for heaven's sake, come in here, Margaret. You're like this. Is it? Listen, don't put me back. Don't let them put me back. I'm not mad. I swear before heaven I'm not mad. It's just that they've locked me up here. They're all wicked. Well, why should they lock you up? They're frightened of me. I know something about them. Years ago, they killed their sister, Rachel. But I wouldn't tell. I promised I'd never tell. And they've kept you here all that time for that? And Morgan. I tell you, he's the devil. Morgan beats me. Don't leave me. Stay with me. Well, that's all right. You sit here and wait. I'll be back. <laughs> the door's locked. Miss Finn must have locked it. It's locked, is it? Yes, it is. I'm glad. Then you can't leave me. Listen, we've got to help the others with Morgan. Isn't there some way of getting through? No, no way. But there must be a back entrance into the house. Stop! I want to tell you a story. in there? Nobody. Friends of yours? I tell you, nobody. Shall we invite them out? You, you were going to tell me something. Yes, so I was. <laughs> won't you, won't you tell me that story? Yes. Shall we sit down? Yes. Let's. Who's in that cupboard? Nobody. Tell me what you were going to say to me. Are you interested in flame? Why? Why, yes, yes, I am, rather. I've made a study of flame. Have you? Well, that must be very interesting. I know things about flames that nobody else in the world knows. Well, won't you tell me? I'd like very much to know. Why should I tell you? You wouldn't tell me who is in that cupboard? Oh, but I did tell you. Besides, you know it. It isn't fair to make me curious and then just not say anything. You'd like me to tell you all about fire, would you? Yes, I wish you would. Well then, first of all, I've learned that flames are really knives. They're cold, my friend. Sharp and cold as snow. They burn like ice. Oh. oh that certainly is very, very interesting. So they're really like knives, are they? Well, do go on. Tell me what else you found out. Oh, a lot of things. My friend, sit down. <laughs> so you thought you could cheat me, did you? You thought you could leave me sitting here and I wouldn't notice. 
But you see, I am a clever man also. That is why we understand one another. That is why you understood so quickly that I wanted to kill you. <laughs> we understand each other so well. Don't we, my friend? Yes. Yes, indeed we do. From the start, somehow, I, I liked you and I, I thought you liked me. Like you? My friend, I love you. Did you know my name is Saul? Saul, my friend. And Saul loved David. Yes, indeed he did. But Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with him and was departed from Saul. And it came to pass on the morrow that the evil spirit came upon Saul and he prophesied in the midst of the house. And David played upon the harp with his hand. And there was a javelin in Saul's hand and Saul cast the javelin. <laughs> And he said, I will smite David even to the wall with it. <laughs> and David avoided out of his presence twice. Twice, my friend. But the third time, the third time, you must be careful. Listen, I'm your friend. I'm on your side. It's silly to lose me. If you lose me, look, there's Morgan. He's come for you, Morgan. Stop it. Don't move! <laughs>
Are you all right, Margaret? Yes, I'm all right, darling. Gladys. It's all right. Come on now. You feeling better? Yes. I'm not so bad. What happened to you? That was Morgan. He hit her. Come on. I'm all right now. Where's Pendrel? I've got to look after him. You better not go over there. Come with me. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Waverton. Good morning. The floods have subsided considerably. Thank heaven for that. I think it will be possible for you to send for an ambulance now. You mean we can go? Yes, I'm sure we can go now. Come on, darling. You're going to stay here with Gladys, aren't you? I am. Don't be long. We won't. We'll be as quick as we can. <laughs> Goodbye. 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 So happy to have met you. and gone to heaven. No, it's morning. And we've only just that tail behind. Morning? Yes. Cold light of day. Wasn't there something you were going to tell me in the cold light of day? Come to think of it, there was. Perkins, will you marry me? 